We are going to continue reading Seigyo poetry. Seigyo poems of a mountain home. <laughs> uh, part 14. Still reading miscellaneous poems. Gray mm -hmm. says, page 147. Bertrand Watson translation. A single pine tree growing in the hollow. And I thought I was the only one without a friend. No, I did not. Here he has a single pine tree growing in the hollow. And I thought I was the only one without a friend. Do you ever see like a tree like all alone in the meadow? <laughs> Don't you think these trees get lonely? They say now that how trees communicate with each other through the roots and all this stuff. You know, they even share share the nutrients and the air and uh, now they say there's networks between so trees. And communication and the social network. And for maybe higher type of communication, but we don't know. There's some interesting books about that and in other words, trees are in a social network. They have some programs in the evolution. They they play music and plants and all the trees. They nurture small trees. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine if like they open up space or light and they do all kinds of who knows what they do? Because usually you think of the trees trying to grab all the light. Yeah. A selfish model. <laughs> Not sure. Anyways, his poem says a single pine tree growing in the hollow, and I thought I was the only one without a friend. <laughs> Poor tree. What is a hollow? A hollow is just like a, a like a meadow or a valley or area between the mountains or hollow space. In the empty. Yeah. Hollow. Well, it's a, I don't know. Space. Hollow. Something's hollow. The mountain of the setting sun. There we go. I don't know what's beyond the mountain where the late sunlight streams, but already I've sent my mind on ahead. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know what's beyond the mountain where the late sunlight streams, but already I've sent my mind on ahead. I guess he's been anticipating what's on the other side. And here it says, the mountain of the setting sun symbolizes the western paradise of Amida Buddha. Uh, so he's sent his mind on ahead to the western paradise. <coughs> He's thinking of Buddhist dreams. <laughs> dreams of paradise. <laughs> I don't know what's beyond the mountain where the late sunlight streams, but already I've sent my mind on ahead. Well, they could all show you could take that on a physical, just as uh, somebody who's trying to imagine what's on the other side of a mountain. What do you think? We all do. Of course you always send your mind ahead somewhere. Always. Curious about. Yeah, but a Zen Buddhist is going to recognize the fact that his mind is sent somewhere. People send their minds all over the place, but they're not being mindful that their minds went. It's a mind in consciousness of the other side. <laughs> My mind. <laughs> so 
because they could say my mind is just right here, but then he couldn't say that the whole time. Well, they try to be aware of where the mind was in the mind, like the past or the future, whether it's present or anyways. The next poem is The Sound of Water is my companion in this lonely hut and lulls between the storms on the peak. I guess now the sound, he still has the sound of water as my companion in this lonely hut and lulls between the storms on the peak. And that's what lulls? Well, lulls, L-U-L-L-S, it's just time periods between storms, between quiet period between storms. But when it's, it says there's not a storm, he still has running water to listen to. Obviously, if he had a storm, he could listen to the storm. So he's always got a sound somewhere. Now he says, in reaped fields where quail cry, the rice double puts up new shoots, rays of a crescent moon lighting them dimly. Hmm. Reaped, reaped means a harvest field mm -hmm. where quail cry. Rice double puts up new shoots. Rays of a crescent moon lightly dimming, lightly lighting them dimly. So, or if it's rays of the crescent moon, it's like almost night, and then he sees the rice double in the moonlight, I guess. Hmm. Hmm. In this lodging that no one visits, and here he complains that no one comes. <laughs> like he, he wanted to be alone, but then he complains no one comes, and he probably didn't invite anybody. In this lodging that no one visits, where no one comes to call, from the moon and the trees, streams of light come poking. So he does have a visitor. In this lodging that no one visits, where no one comes to call, from the moon and the tree, streams of light come poking in. He's in a reading from poems of his mountain home. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So it seems to Then he says, in a hailstorm, you can hear there, they are there, all right, the dried leaves fallen from the twigs of the oaks. From the first phase, I follow the reading in Roka Su text, the Yama text reads, Amalai Su, the Yosu translation. Mournful with a sharp sound, you hear them, the dried leaves falling from the twigs of the oaks. He says, in a hailstorm, you can hear, they are there all right, the dried leaves falling from the twigs of the oak. I guess this means that the hail is hitting the leaves. And you, you recognize that the leaves are there. On a little ridge of evergreens, where two rivers meet, woodsmen on the rocks, how cool they must be. Well, if you have two rivers meeting, it's going to be cool by the river. On a little ridge of evergreens where two rivers meet, woodsmen on the rocks, how cool they must be. Hmm. Hmm. The water puts 
soft, cool, and it's like an air conditioner. <laughs> hmm. Maybe it's hot. I don't know. We don't have a season here. In a tree that stands on the crag by abandoned paddies. A dove calling to its companion in the desolate twilight. In a tree that stands on the crag by abandoned paddies, a dove calling to its companion in the desolate twilight. This is both in the porch and the Shinsu and the Shinko Shinsu. Next poem, Butterflies Darting. So familiarly among the flowers that bloom by the fence. I envy them, yet know how little time they have left. <laughs> he envies the flowers, I mean the butterflies, that they don't have much time left. <laughs> he envies the butterflies. Hmm? He envies the butterflies. Why does he envy them? Because they're easy to Butterflies darting so familiarly among the flowers that bloom by the fence. I envy them, yet know how little time they have left. <laughs> they don't have much time, do they? Hmm. Cherry petals like the tears of someone who's lonely. Showering down when the wind blows cold. Goodness. Cherry petals like the tears of someone who's lonely. Showering down when the wind blows cold. People have tears when they're lonely? I can't imagine such loneliness. Goodness. I don't get lonely. Will you stay with me? And <laughs> <laughs> what if I went to the woods and was lonely? <laughs> I don't want to be lonely. Well, it's nice to be in the woods, but oh my goodness! Now he says, Mount. Yoshino, I doubt I'll be leaving it soon. Though friends, two friends, I'm sure are waiting, saying, once the blossoms have fallen. There was something about how people, once the blossoms fall, they leave or something. What's the big deal? Oh, you know, I doubt I'll be leaving it soon, though friends, I'm sure, are waiting, saying, once the blossoms have fallen. Oh, the friends are there waiting for him to show. They're, they're, in other words, they they expect to see you when the flowers fall, because you're going to expect you're going to show up at Mount Yoshino, and the, oh, that's what it is. When the blossoms fall, you're going to show up. So your friends, your friends expect you to show up, basically. We are reading from hmm. reading from Segyo. Hmm. 